I remember when I was a counseling intern, like, 15 years ago or whatever it was, and I was doing this classroom lesson on bullying, I think. So there I am, I'm, I'm walking down the hallway on the way to the lesson, and I was with my counseling supervisor, and she was like, so, how you feel? And I was like, yo, I'm pumped. Like, I feel 100% confident, this is my jam. Like, I love running my mouth, as you guys can probably tell, but I swear she chuckled under her breath. <laughs> so there I was, I introduced the lesson, I jump into it, I have like slides and a video that I wanna show, and already about one minute into it, I had to tell the kids to quiet down or like stop talking while I was talking, which kind of made things awkward a little bit because I was trying to be like Mr. Counselor SEL nice guy teaching a lesson on kindness, but I was visibly mad because they were interrupting my stuff. And so uh, I made my way through the lesson with probably less than ideal engagement, less than ideal attention from the kids. Uh, and then I was like, okay guys, now I have some discussion questions that I would love to walk through. So for those of you that are seeing this video, um, or maybe you're like a school partner with us through In Control SEL, or you use our uh, middle school or high school video curriculum, uh, you know that all of these videos or all of these activities and a lot of other curriculum too, they end with some kind of discussion prompt. Ours kind of look like this. So if you saw me that day in the lesson, you never would have guessed that I went on to create a curriculum that involved a lot of classroom discussion. Like, I remember that day back then, uh, I remember I asked the first question with the discussion prompts, and it was like crickets. <laughs> Nobody said anything. And then I remember feeling like, feeling that feeling in my chest, like, oh my gosh, they're not into it. And even more so, I looked bad in front of my counseling uh, supervisor. And so I remember like the next thing that came out of my mouth was something horrible, like, come on guys, stop being so lame, say something. That didn't go over so well with my counseling supervisor or the 11 year olds. <laughs> so since then, I've gotten a lot better at classroom discussions. Uh, but I know some of our teachers out there who use our curriculum or even other curricula out there, they're tasked with having these conversations and they kind of have a hard time doing it. Like it's not their sweet spot. So I just wanted to give you guys some practical tips that I learned along the way <laughs> due to the mistakes that I made on how to have these awesome conversations that actually change classroom culture. Okay, so the first tip. Offer up the first answer. Uh, we teach this all the time in our staff training events when we onboard new customers. Uh, sometimes, especially with teens, this is really hard because nobody wants to be the one that breaks the ice, right? It's weird, it's vulnerable. Uh, for a lot of kids, it's scary. So you, as the adult leader in the room, jump in, offer up some kind of uh, life example that you have that's applicable to the video or to the lesson or whatever it is that you're doing, or even outside of that. Just make sure that it's appropriate. And if you're like wondering too many times, is this appropriate? Just, I wouldn't even say that. The second tip, create a safe place. Uh, sometimes when kids don't wanna share or share anything of substance, it might be due to the fear of getting made fun of by the other kids in the class. Nobody likes to get heckled, especially not in middle school or high school. That's actually like the number one nightmare. So it's our job as the leader to make sure that our students think that this is the safest place on earth uh, to share what we have to share. I'm not big on laying consequences or being authoritarian in classrooms or anything, but I do think it's totally okay for you to voice how fanatical you are about people being able to be themselves in a classroom without having fear of ridicule. Make kids feel safe when opening up. Thank them really graciously when they do finally open up. And heck, thank everybody else in the classroom for listening when they do. Finally, this is a big one, just have fun. Uh, I know in education, we're like a bunch of Pavlovian dogs who are like scared to get off task, but remember uh, who you're dealing with. They're teenagers. Some of the conversations that you have in our curriculum or other curriculums or whatever might go sideways. Or like, heck, even if you're a math teacher and you're teaching like two-step equations, the conversations might go sideways. Um, lean into those fun and funny moments as long as they're appropriate. Sometimes that's the trick in itself when things go off task or things go sideways, you know, as long as it's in like a, a positive and, and progressive manner. Uh, just embrace it, have fun with your kids. Uh, as long as you're moving 
kind of in the right direction. Like it's, it's totally okay to have fun and to smile and to laugh. That will create a connection, which will then um, invest in future conversations because the kids will be looking forward to them. All right, so if you're watching this video and you have no idea about some of the things that I was talking about in regards to like the programs that we offer, they're really fun and, and more importantly, they're zero teacher prep. So if like you wanna uh, gain commitment from your staff, uh, we have some really awesome, really relevant, really engaging lessons uh, that kind of look like this, but it's like, kids communicating to other kids about different lessons that we want to teach them. So uh, you can check that out. I'm sure there's a link somewhere around here. If this is YouTube down in the description or, or if this is like TikTok, Instagram, whatever, you'll find a, you'll find a link somewhere. You can take a demo of it and uh, hopefully that helps you. But uh, that's all I got for today. All right, y'all. See you later.